Uh, it's now my pleasure to introduce uh, Jonas Saponsis. He's an associate professor at the Derner School of Psychology and Delphi University and the director of its school psychology program. He is a faculty member and supervisor in the psychoanalytic psychotherapy uh, in the child and adolescent and family psychotherapy programs of the Derner School of Psychology. His articles have been published in the journals of psychoanalytic psychotherapy, psychoanalytic review, and in the Journal of Infant, Child, and Adolescent Psychotherapy. He has worked with emotionally disabled children and students in the spectrum in school and community settings and maintains a private practice in Garden City, New York. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Um, good evening, everybody. First, I want to thank Ron and John for this book um, and, of course, for inviting me to submit a paper. Um, I also want to thank um, Megan, Elizabeth, Danielle um, for, for organizing this event, and of course for Amira, who uh, has created the climate that um, facilitates these events from taking place. Um, it's very nice to see so many people involved, eh, because it's good to see you again, several of you, like Michael, I have a history with some of you, so seeing you is it's going back in time, um, but it's also nice to see participation, to see community, to see a sense of belonging. I presented this paper 10 years ago. The paper is called The Failure to Understand as a Transitional Experience. And I presented that paper 10 years ago at the conference on failure. At the time when we planned the conference, and I was along with Michael O'Loughlin uh, in the committee that planned the conference, uh, we, we, the failures have been very much in our mind because we were dealing, if you remember, with the collapse of financial institutions, Lehman Brothers, AIG, the subprime loans or mortgage loans, um, Bernie Madoff, etc. It's somewhat uncanny and sad that 10 years later we are facing failures that are even larger, I think, um, perhaps not so much economical, it's more like moral, if you want. Um, and who would have thought? Um, I believe at the time that the majority of the papers in the conference focused on relational failures, personal failures, like the failures to dream, to cope, to be, etc. But I focused on the failure to understand, um, because in our field, even though we grapple with experiences that are difficult to understand, we find it sometimes very difficult to tolerate the experience of non-understanding which is a frequent experience because we're working with difficult clients. Um, at the time, um, I was reading a book and by Saramago, uh, who was a Portuguese novelist. And he had the book is titled The Siege of the History of the Story of the Siege of Lisbon. And in the book, um, the main protagonist is a, a very unimaginative and very constricted proofreader who every day follows the same routine and does proofreads the manuscripts and then has his soup and goes for his walk and then goes to bed. And he finds inexplicably uh, unable to resist the urge to enter one word in, in the manuscript is proofreading. And he enters it and the word is not, N-O-T. And he finishes the manuscript, brings it to the editor, but unfortunately, this didn't work, changed everything because the sentence was reading and the crusaders decided to come to the help of the Portuguese against the Arabs. And of course, by inserting the word not, the crusaders decided not to come to the aid of the Portuguese. And the, supposedly the manuscript was something about the history of, Portu of Portugal. And I found that very interesting because it's a lovely book, but it is something about having a reaction, having an experience that often we don't understand, an urge that cognitively we're not as aware of it. And yet we're doing it. And if you, if once we pursue it and hold on to it, other realities emerge, other experiences as this becomes apparent in the book. So um, in our field, uh, and at the time I was reading that and we had a conference, I thought that in our field, we struggle with this idea of, um, with our failures to understand. And um, 
And the question is, we, we understand, of course, why we're struggling to some extent. Understanding is a good experience. We love to understand. We are in this business to understand. And there is something new that's being created when we understand others, when there is a mutuality, when we understand our clients, there is appreciation, there is something shared, there is an act of love, of knowledge. Not understanding, on the other hand, feels bad. I mean, there are some non-understandings where we don't care, but not understanding states of not understandings with our clients feel bad. We feel stuck. We feel confused. We feel impotent. It is to some extent a narcissistic blow, but more important, it is an existential blow because, you know, we do this job out of love. We want to understand. We want to make sense. So it's a very unpleasant experience because of that, and also because often we find ourselves flooded with emotions, experiences that are being projected to us that we cannot organize and we cannot make sense of. And so we find ourselves reacting and saying things that deep down we don't really like or sometimes they ring hollow. It's a very alienating experience. But to me, this division between understanding, not understanding, is a little strange because to some extent, not understanding is part of our lives. It's fact, in fact, it's unavoidable. We often don't understand others and the way they think, the way they act. And often we don't understand ourselves. Like, why did I do that yesterday? Why was I thinking, etc. And our understanding is incomplete and always evolving. And we know that, right? We know that. We are sane enough to know that, that our, under, that our understanding changes as our perspectives change. That doesn't necessarily mean that our later understandings are better than the previous ones, just that it changes, it's fluid. Winnicott said, the essence of us will remain unknown to us. It's a lovely quote, I love that quote. Not because it's mystical, not because it's a mystical element, but, but because it alludes to the element of surprise, to other perspectives, that there is something that always would be involved and we would never know for sure. But, so there's something deep, deeply hopeful in that. Beyond calls it movement towards all. Of course, one question for us to ask is, do we ever fully understand? And the other way to ask is, you know, and to change gears here, do we ever fully not understand? If we are afraid of under not understanding, are we really not understanding? And let me say a bit something more here, right? Which is, there is a lot of writings in our field about unrepresented states, unformulated experiences, better elements. Clients in, who are in such states who uh, confuse us, frustrate us, leave us unsure as to what else to do. But I would argue that there is understanding in them too. There is proto-understanding, the understanding that something has to be avoided, that something is too much. There is the understanding of the world and of experiences that make little or no sense. And that's a frightening kind of understanding. The issue is not so much whether we fully understand what's happening or we do not understand, but rather, what do we do with these experiences? If we treat our understanding as an absolute, uh, then we are denying ourselves our capacity to change, to evolve, to question. Then our understanding becomes a closed system, a minus understanding, to paraphrase uh, Bion, a minus you, a fact that can foreclose further understanding. Um, same, I guess, in the case of our not understanding. If we treat it as a better element, if it, to treat it as something to be avoided, if we become too threatened by it, then we end up denying ourselves um, from what the experience of not understanding is pointing to. The brilliance in Winnicott's idea of the transitional space lies in that he invites us to reflect on what happens when infants find themselves faced with the external with another reality that they cannot control and cannot comprehend. The same applies to his notion of the potential space, which is the space that for applies more later in life. What happens when we are faced with experiences that are alienating and very removed from the internal and the subjective? What we do is critical. Our capacity to play, to entertain, to contemplate is critical. Play, in this case, does not mean playing with nice ideas. 
That's great. But see, the nice ideas create the play playing field for us. If I read a wonderful book, I have zillion ideas. If I see a nice movie, I have a zillion ideas. If I listen to a nice lecture, I have many ideas. If I talk to a very moving client, I have many ideas. The issue is, can we play when in states of non-understanding, an oxymoron? Can we find the space to contemplate and entertain other possibilities when we feel stuck, empty, and even irritated? Can we contemplate other perspectives when in that state? Can we create a transitional space? And I would like to say, yes, we can. If we tolerate the experience, if we don't project it back, the experience of not understanding, if we don't project it back or turn it into a better element. You know, I have several clients that worked over the years, as I'm sure many of you, um, who are closed up, unimaginative, who act out, who are dismissive, who leave little room to entertain ideas, who do not question. These are clients that can annoy me. But if I pause and think, these are clients who exist in the not, N-O-T, in the negative, who find safety in the not thinking, the not seeking, the not being, the not imagining. This is unimaginable to me. Clients, in other words, who live a very, very deprived lives. When we think like that, when we find our, in ourselves the capacity to listen to the negative, to follow the negative, to not be frightened by the negative, and let our thoughts come, we not only become more tolerant of our clients, but also of our reactions, and we're able to think and be. What the client does, how far the client goes, is a different issue. But for us, the issue is that we're able to be, and then to do something in that space between us, them, internal, external, understood, not understood. And when that happens, uh, as, B, as Winnicott says, therapy begins. Thank you. Thank you, Jonas.